So we're about to jump into quite a advanced topic here, which is how to use objects. So you may remember objects from our classes when they started talking about object-oriented programming. And then suddenly you were whisked away and didn't actually understand what was going on, but just started copying off the board and never really understood it. So to think about object-oriented programming, or OO as I'll refer to it from now on, it's important to understand why we do it. So the reason that we use OO is that in order to achieve or meet a need, we don't always need programs that are linear. We don't need programs that run from top to bottom and that's it. We need programs that will change as we use them and we need them to be structured in a logical way. So to look at it a different way, every time you think about how to create a program, you should be thinking about how will these things that I'm creating fit together in a way that is most logical. So for instance, here we have a person class. Now, every person that I've ever met has a name, whether it be first or last. Um, most of them will have a phone number and an address and a postcode. So say this was also a person that was part of a swimming center. They'd also have whether or not they're a member. So these are all just generic things, but it's important to understand that every person that is created will have these things inside of them. Whether or not they actually have them assigned is a different story. But every time you create a person, it will have all these things inside of it. So just like how, as a person, I have an arm, a leg, and different types of things, you should be looking at your class as everything that's inside this person class should relate to the person. Okay, so another thing that you have to remember though is inside this class, I'm not going to store anything that I don't need. If I don't need someone's phone number, I'm not going to store it because I'm not doing anything with it and it's just using up space and it could also present a privacy risk if it were to get out. As with all personal details, you have to make sure that they're properly contained and properly encrypted. So if you don't need something, there's no reason to have it. If you have to, some for some reason, encrypt it, and then that uses up more of your time and resources. So instead of doing that, make sure each of your classes that you create, if you're going to be object-oriented, they are going to have to relate inside of it what's actually needed and what's actually related. So inside a person, I'm not going to have, um, say, what's in a car. So I'm not going to have something here and say, oh, so each person is um, has a car and their car is going to have a different type of, say, so they had a steering, steering wheel or something. Right? I'm not going to have that in there because this is a person. They're not going to have a steering wheel. Their car might have a steering wheel, right? Think about it logically, think about it um, progressively, like how am I going to store the steering wheel? Do I, is it, has it got anything to do with the person? No. So I'm going to store it in a separate class, maybe called car, for instance. Each car will have a steering wheel. So the best way to think about it is what is generic to every single person that every person that I create is going to have to have. Alright? So if you wanted different types of people, you could then do things like uh, subclassing or um, having child classes, so you might have a generic thing called person, and you might have another class that extends off person, that is perhaps um, a member. So you can have different, you can have a member person, or you can have a staff person. Who knows? But we're not going through that right now. We're just going through the principles. So OO is a powerful way of creating programs that enables you to be dynamic, to be changing, and to, in the end, have a more structured look of your program.